morning all it's post bag so let's start here this just says bulb and yes I thought these were loose these are the little LED uh, strips that uh, are the internals of that new retro filament lead bulb that I got recently now the filaments in the bulb uh, look like they're a slightly darker colour so it may be that the bulb is a warm white and these are cool white I can't remember I'll, I'll have to look that up um, I have to say this bulb is just utterly fantastic it behaves very much like a 40 watt uh, tungsten incandescent light bulb but of course it only takes four watts but the light is excellent in fact I go so far as to say I really think this is the future of light bulbs now let's get in nice and close on these things. You can just about make out that um, on one of the tabs there's a blob of red paint so that presumably indicates positive. Now if you look on that bottom uh, filament you can see the individual LEDs on the substrate. Now it's not going to be that metal strip running right through because that would mean that it was a... Uh... actually it could be uh, mounted on there I guess. Now there would have to be a break wouldn't there somewhere um, otherwise it would be a, a dead short but I just wonder what that substrate is maybe at some point I'll scrape some of this yellow rubbery jelly stuff off and uh, actually see what's inside okay let's light one of these things up now as usual I only have 12 volts available on my workbench so I'm going to use this boost converter this digitally control boost converter and you can see I've soldered one of the uh, LED filaments to the output. So now the listing, let's check the listing. So here's the item on eBay and it is uh, four pieces of a one watt cob lead filament light and so on. One pound fifty nine and that came from each desk. Now further down the listing we've got some technical data which is right down the bottom here. And that says that these things need between 50 and 60 volts at 15 milliamps. So let's start low, let's start at 50 volts. So I've set the converter for 50 volts, 50.7. Let's switch on the output. Now this is the converter that takes an age to ramp up. So I'll keep my finger on the off switch just in case this thing gets very bright. 30 volts. Got quite a long way to go. 40 volts. Uh, okay, 50 volts. Well, don't appear to have anything there. So I've upped it to 60 volts and there's still nothing on the output, which is slightly odd. I think I'll just measure the uh, voltage on the output terminals. So we've definitely got uh, 60 volts there but that LED hasn't come on at all. Let's see if I can count the number of LEDs there are uh, on, the, on the strip. So I've counted the LEDs on that strip and there are 28. Now that's nearly 30 and if we reckon on about 3 volts per LED that's nearly 90 volts, so I think I'm just going to up this thing a bit further. Okay, so let's take it up to 65. 70. Ah, right. Now they're coming on. Good. Okay, so this thing needs a lot more than 60 volts to light up. I'm up to 70 volts. Let's check the current. Well, it's not registering any current. Um, it might be quite tricky getting this thing to uh, limit at 15 milliamps because that's going to be 0 0.015 but there's no digit for the 5 so 0 0.02 will probably be safe. Now remember the voltage current curve for an LED or it works the same for a string of LEDs in series. Um, when it's dim we're down here so we can control the voltage here and uh, sort of relatively large movements in voltage 
result in tiny movements in current. So it's safe to use voltage control when an LED is dim. Now, when an LED is bright, we're up here and uh, tiny amounts of change in voltage will result in very large swings in current. And that's why for LEDs at full brightness, and let's face it, all LEDs want to be at full brightness, they need to be current controlled. We need to control this uh, parameter here. We can't voltage control it because you just don't have the precision. Now I've just darkened things slightly so we can see the LED. But uh, the point I'm making is that at these low brightnesses, there's not really a problem taking this up to 72 volts, 73 volts. That looks bright, but it isn't. Um, 70. Six. Oh, maybe that is getting a bit bright. No, it's quite happy at 80 volts, even without current regulation, without current limiting. Well, now I was going to show that at 80 volts, we're still not drawing any significant current. Uh, we're not even drawing 10 milliamps. But now the boost converters decided to go a bit mad and the output is switching on and off like crazy. So I'm not quite sure what's going on here, but it doesn't seem to be able to hold a very stable 80 volts. Hmm. Uh, so I've dropped it to back down to 75 volts. Um, now I've also set the current limit to 20 milliamps, but of course it's not drawing anything like 20 milliamps. So the current limit LED doesn't come on. The green LED there is the constant voltage, the voltage limit LED. So that's about as far as I can go. But certainly these um, strips appear to take a lot higher voltage than the uh, eBay listing would indicate. Now, just while I've got the boost converter out, Jim Connor said to me that uh, his one goes mad if you set it to less than 0.13 volts. So there it is on 0.12 volts. Switch on the output. And that seems to be perfectly happy. Let's take that right down to next to zero. Switch on the output. Ah, mine is doing what his did which is when you set a very, very low voltage, the thing goes completely bonkers and starts ramping up. And he said he's got to, or went over 80 volts, which is the actual limit on this device. Um, shall we see if it goes over 80 volts? It's gonna take a little while, so I'll just stop for a moment. So I'm ready to hit the kill switch. The LED's coming on. We know it's happy at 80 volts, but maybe not much beyond. Yep, mine goes over 80 volts as well. So yes, you're right, Jim. Um, the 0 0.13 thing that you've got, uh, mine's slightly different, but if I put it to 0.05, mine also goes a bit mad. Okay, no clues on this one. Uh, on the other side is just my address. So, but I think I know what it is because I can feel the shape of it. And uh, yes, it is a set of 10 nine-way cables uh, wired into JST connectors. Now these are described as 8S and that um, relates to eight uh, LiPo or lithium cells in series and for eight lithium cells in series you of course need a ninth wire um, so that you've got the negative of all the cells and then the positive of the first and so on right up to the eighth. Uh, JST stands for Japan Solderless Terminal. XH is the type that is a 0.1 inch pitch. So you'll see here that uh, I've been able to plug the socket bit that's also supplied into a standard 0.1 inch pitch breadboard. Connector balance wire. So definitely these have been um, sold as balanced charging leads. So the reason I bought these is because uh, I want to start getting the parts together for my... Uh, electric bicycle conversion from lead acid batteries to lithium and I've decided to go for lithium uh, iron phosphate, the LIFEPO4s as I call them, because I just think it's going to be too much hassle using 18650s. So this is a website uh, eclipsebikes.com and a big thanks to Peter Woolley who uh, put me onto this uh, website. He's already bought some of these LIFEPO4s, these lithium iron phosphate cells. There are the cells, um, and I'll probably go for the next to largest one, so the one, one from the bottom. 
Now, if you want to see uh, Pete's excellent YouTube channel where he's done a lot of work on these Life Epo 4 cells, just go to my channel page and then here in my featured channels, here is Peter. Pete Caffey is his uh, YouTube name. Now, these are the cells I'm thinking of going with. These are the Headway 12 amp hour cells. And look at the way you connect to them. They've got these fantastic great big bolts stuck in the end. So, I mean, connecting these things up is incredibly simple. They're not cheap, £16.50 each, and I'm going to need eight of them. So it's a fair old investment. And you can see there that the uh, voltage is 3.2 volts for lithium ion phosphate rather than 3.7 for lithium ion. Now you can also get these stacking end caps so that you can very quickly build uh, battery banks uh, using these uh, plug together battery holders. There's also uh, a large array of sort of connectors and also these um, metal connector pieces so that once you've got the cells in those plastic holders you put these metal connector pieces across uh, to join all the terminals up and of course these are going to be massively high current. So you can see roughly how this is going to look if you look at their pre-built battery packs. Now these things come with BMS uh, PCBs and all fancy stuff like that. I probably won't bother but that's the sort of uh, layout of the battery pack that it's going to look like once it's finished. So as soon as I can afford it I'm going to buy eight of these cells and all the uh, connecting hardware to build my Life Epo 4 battery pack but for the moment I've just got my 9 lead 8S balanced charging cable. And so on eBay these are 8S JST XH connector balance wire cable £4.76 for 10 pieces and that came from eShopic. Okay, this one is a gadget worth $7.40. And it's a display. Now it looks like a Nokia 5110 display, which is the 84 by 48 pixels. But uh, it's not. This came from DX.com, Deal Extreme. And it's described as an XS055 1.6 inch 240 by 320 TFT LCD module, $7.40. Um, that's free shipping to the UK. Now I've been shining a torch on this thing to see if I can see the matrix of pixels, but I can't make it out. I just can't see it. They're going to be quite fine at 240 by 320. Now what I like about these monochrome LCDs, my camera insists on focusing on what's reflected in the display, not on the display itself. So I'm going to have to hold it here outside of the autofocus uh, detector. Yeah, what I like about these is that they these monochrome LCDs are very visible in bright sunlight. So for projects which uh, spend most of their time outdoors, like my um, MPPT solar charge controller project, you really want to display like this. OLEDs don't show up too well. The color LCDs are hopeless. You can't see them at all. But these monochrome LCDs are really easy to view. Now, 240 by 320 pixels will be able to take a lot more information than 84 by 48. The only problem with this is that there is absolutely no data on it. Um, so I've no idea even which chip it uses. So I'm just going to sort of fire commands at it. I know it's a SPI. I'll just fire commands a bit like commands used on the uh, 5110 display. And if that doesn't work, I'll fire some commands a bit like the OLEDs and just keep going until I get this thing to actually do something. And uh, finally, we have an Amazon packet. Let's see what we've got in here. Now, these are very nice. These are from Through Night, and we've got here a couple of torches. Now, this one is, it's got a nice window in it. This is the Through Night T10, and this little one is the Through Night TI3. No window in that box. So let's open it up. That's the TI3. That's a little AAA torch. And the T10 is a AA flashlight. So the T10, which is the AA, 
uh, you press the switch and it comes on and then if you go off on quickly it's dim off on quickly medium and back to bright again if you leave it for any length of time and switch it on it comes on at full brightness now it also comes with this rather interesting plastic white cap which kind of turns it into a omnidirectional light and it also stands up on its rear how interesting so the T10 has a Cree XPG2 LED uses one AA 1.5 volt cell and the max output is 169 lumens now this little TI3 is so light it's almost completely weightless in fact it's so light I thought for a moment it must be made of plastic but it's not it's made of aluminium so I'm going to put a battery in there now off camera I just tried this and I said to myself wow that's amazing it has no switch because it's so small there isn't really room for one if you tighten the cap up it comes on dim release and tighten medium release and tighten bright that's fantastic so the TI3 is a small but powerful one AAA flashlight maximum output is 120 lumens and it uses an a Cree XPG2 R5 LED just to give you a sense of the size of this through night TI3 here it is sitting next to a USB plug so there are the uh, through night T10 and TI3 flashlights now also through night sent me the TN12 and just for a bit of fun this firefly mode the very low brightness mode I calculated that this torch should run for about eight weeks so this thing has been on in firefly mode for about four or five days now I'm not saying I'm going to leave it on for the full eight weeks but uh, I'll just leave it on on this low brightness mode for as long as I can I'm just intrigued at the long battery life of this in its low brightness mode so here's the uh, T10 on Through Night's own website. It's $26.95. Now they do do free shipping on orders over $49.95. And uh, here's the very tiny TI3, and that's $19.95. And so that is today's post bag.